The Black Talk Radio Network is made possible in part with help from the Black Talk Media Project, a North Carolina-based nonprofit engaged in the production and distribution of independent digital black media. Find out more by going to blacktalkradionetwork.com or blacktalkmediaproject.org and look for the menu tab, Crowdfunding Black Media. Black Talk Media Project, helping to provide you with new black media for the new millennium. opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. This is Onai Jimaweed, host of Race Treaty. We come to you every Friday evening between the hours of 9 and 10 Eastern Standard Time. And Race Treaty is concerned with African people worldwide and future of humanity. And we look at um, all human rights, convention and covenants, concepts and principles, but particularly we look at ICERD, International Convention on for the Elimination of Discrimination. And of course, discrimination is really a question, code word for racism. To understand racism and all its levels, its forms, its practices, the consequences of such, and more importantly, the remedy for such, uh, which will come in the form of reparations, restitution, rehabilitation, and compensation. And we are organizing on many, many fronts uh, for those purposes. And as we do that, uh, we bring to these airwaves many of the illuminaries, those individuals who have given uh, mm -hmm. time, talent, in fact, their lives for the liberation of our people in an enactment of human rights. Uh, tonight, we have such a guest with us in Wally. Imani is um, a brother who has been in the right place at the right time doing the right things. Uh, graduated from Kinson High School in 1951. And that school, in fact, uh, protested, uh, walked out, in fact, of the classroom because they demanded better facilities. And... Um, the administration said, well, yeah, maybe about 10 years we'll give it some thought. Well, guess what? Two years later, they had a, a gymnasium. Um, he's been involved with many struggles. Uh, and, and tonight, we're welcoming him to talk about Elambe Braff. And uh, for those of us who know uh, ancestor Elambe Braff, can't really speak about Elambe Braff without talking about Irving Davis because they were tied at the hip as co-founders uh, co-directors of the Patrice Lumumba Coalition in New York. So at this time, let me welcome uh, Iwalimu uh, Imani back to Airways, who was here with us back in uh, April of this year when, when he talked about the Black Manifesto. Brother Iwalimu uh, Imani, welcome. Please be with you, but I, I have to correct you. I, I okay. did not graduate. <laughs> I did not graduate from Kinston High School. It was called Atkin High School, and I graduated in 1960. The walkout, in fact, did occur 
1951. And I just was the person who kind of put light to it so that the nation would know about it. Thank you so much. You see, people, it's always good to have your elders around because they always, number one, they know what the real deal is and they can correct you, number two. So it's always good to be, you know, stay, you know, if I, as they say, staying corrected. So thank you so much, Elder, for, for that uh, correction. So, um, mm-hmm. so I wanted to uh, ask you, you know, a few questions uh, as a lead into it was last week uh, in New York City that uh, many uh, family members, community members, well wishes, uh, gathered on 125th Street to witness the unveiling of Ilambe Braff Way on 125th Street. Um, I haven't uh, read any of the articles about it. I heard about it. I was not able to attend because I was at the Association for the Study of African American uh, Culture and Life, uh, Carter G. Witches Organization in Ohio. So I w- unfortunately wasn't able to attend, but I think you've had the opportunity to uh, read some some copy uh, about that event and maybe even speak to some folks involved with it. So please tell us a little bit about Elambe Braff and why do you think and why do others feel that a street should be named after him? Well, I'm 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 just absolutely honored to be on this program at this particular time, so that I could tell you what I know. Um, I am absolutely pleased that um, Ilambe has a street sign in Harlem named for him. I, I just think that is so timely and so due. Um, and the location happens to coincide with where I first met him. And unfortunately, I could not be at Ilambe's uh, transition service. I wanted to be, I just could not be. However, I did send a eulogy. I also sent his wife lovely wife, Namsa, a a card. But uh, the eulogy I sent to his oldest son, who's the only one of the children that I know, uh, certainly as adults, I left New York back in 1978. All of them were kids. Um, The time that I would visit the house, they were all kids. But uh, Mugabe, who is the oldest and who is currently a professor at NYU. Um, I did send it to him, but for some reason, the eulogy did not get read. Uh, If you permit me, I'd like to read it now. Um, Well, by all means, I would love to uh, hear hear it myself, as well as the listening audience. Well, yeah, all right. I'm going to proceed on that. To my dear brother, I am saddened by the news that my dear brother, Yolambe Brath, has transitioned to the ancestors. He contributed greatly to the struggles of our people, both here and abroad. He lived to see the abolition of apartheid in South Africa and the rise of free nations in the rest of Southern Africa when many thought that was impossible. I first encountered Ilambe in 1959 in front of the Teresa Hotel, pushing literature for the African Nationalist Pioneer Movement, AMPM. Since then, we worked together on many campaigns. I remember the Sunday afternoon meetings in Mount Morris Park, now Marcus Garvey Park, back in the 60s, when Yolande would speak for what seemed like hours as our people were soaking up every word of the historical events that he logically laid out. I was impressed with his ability to bring in other, other nationalist groups to hear his lectures. In attendance on a regular basis was Quabrena Prempe. Uh, Quabrena was uh, with the UNIA, Universal Negro Improvement Association, Marcus Garvey's organization, my brother Walter Moore, 
of Chaka Tange, Kojo Carter, and Brother Cletus, and so many others. I will always remember the impact the Grandassa model had on our culture. Our sisters began to wear their hair naturally, and the brothers started wearing dashikis. Ilambe and Kwame, Kwame's his brother, made blacks proud long before James Brown popularized it in song in 1968. I remember working with Ilambe on the Black Media Workshop Project at Hunter College downtown in 1965. Unrest in the streets caused major media outlets to willingly participate and began hiring blacks in numbers never seen before. Many blacks were hired in all forms of media because of this outstanding effort. One who benefited was our departed brother, Gil Noble. Ilambe's love for Mother Africa and its people in the diaspora is legend. His knowledge of the political and cultural aspects of the continent was incomparable. I frequently tested him on events, personalities, or politics of a particular country, and seldom, and he seldom failed to deliver a correct answer. <laughs> we had a mutual admiration for each other. It was because of our relationship that it became possible to form an organization together. I introduced Ilambe to Brother Irving Davis. Irving and I came out of uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, and the Pan-African Skills Project. The Patrice Lumumba Coalition was co-founded by the three of us in 1975. I wrote the founding document. I will always remember how happy Ilambe was at that Harlem meeting. We traveled across country from time to time organizing support for liberation movements. Lou Myers, Irving, Ilambe, and I met at Buzz Palmer's place in Chicago to discuss PLC matters, and we wound up talking all night long. Somehow, we all functioned in committee sessions the next day. There are so many more memories I have of Ilambe's life work, but I will stop with this one. When Brother Davis made his transition in 1981, I was tasked to make final public arrangements. The first person I called was Ilambe. The memorial service was held in the auditorium at the United Nations building on the east side and was conducted by Ilambe and I. Ilambe's work is done, and he did it exceedingly well. It is now up to us to apply the lessons he so ably taught. Peace to you, my brothers and sisters. That is the eulogy that I would have delivered had I been able to. I'm so glad that um, of the three co-founders of PLC, that um, the surviving member yourself is still with us and able to give us the facts and the history of not only the organization, but the two other individuals who are now ancestors. I'm speaking certainly about ancestor Irving Davis, who you mentioned uh, made his transition in 1981, and also ancestor now, Ilambe Braff. And in fact, I was at that memorial as a student of PL, as a member of PLC, and also as a, as a student uh, studying industrial engineering at Pratt Institute. I was working with Irvin in terms of um, the Pan-African Skills Project in terms of intentions and, and planning. So by you bringing up these dates and these, these personalities, you actually are recalling my fundamental teachings about Africa, African people, and our struggles for liberation. So thank you so much. And uh, I would certainly like to get a copy of uh, that eulogy and um, have it reserved uh, at the Schomburg Library, uh, so 
know the true history. In fact, Mualimu, um, I've known you for some some time, and I know you was very much involved, but this is the first time publicly that you shared with with me and the listening audience that you, in fact, not only were you there, but you were a co-founder. I did know that you introduced Irving, uh, Ancestor Irving Davis and Ancestor Ilambe to each other, uh, but now I'm getting a better understanding of the centrality that you that you hold in terms of those individuals and the work, of course, of the organization. Thank you so very much. If you had um, more time to um, add to that eulogy, uh, and I know it's just kind of right off the top, but what else would you want to say about uh, Ancestor uh, Ilambe Brath? Well, let, let me expand a bit on how this marriage came to be. Um, I had to convince Irving to come to one of the uh, talks in Marcus Garvey Park. I literally had to convince him to do it. And when he went, it was on Sunday afternoon, he, he said to me, is this guy ever going to stop talking? Um, so I said, just be patient. Because frankly, were it not for me, they never would have met. Uh, I told them to be patient because I figured that I was the only one alive who could do what ultimately was done. Um, not that I controlled Irving because nobody did, and not that I control Ilambe because nobody did, but they both respected me. And after that session, I, I had, I'd already told Irving, I said, you know, one of the things that tends to happen is that he lectures and everybody eats chicken or whatever, and people go away happy. It's not a SNCC-like organization. Uh, so you won't see people with assignments going to do some work. So he said, oh, well, why would I want to be involved in that? I said, no, I see something different emerging from this. So Irving went to the session. After the session, during the following week, we talked about it almost on a daily basis at Pan African Skill Project offices. And finally, he says, well, the brother does offer a lot, but but we have to control him. We, we don't need hour-long speeches and then do nothing. We, that's not our culture, meaning SNCC, all right, and Pan African Skills Project. We, Whenever we're in a meeting, you're always left with an assignment to do, and you reported on it. Well, that's the culture that we came out of. So eventually, he was satisfied that the brother could be an asset. So I then had to go to Ilambe. But Ilambe, in order for, for us to move forward, you have to organize your people. So meaning he had all these different or, uh, nationalist organizations. So he did, in fact, um, bring all them, all of those organizations into one. And with that, oh, some of the names I mentioned earlier, with that, we were able to then form an organization uh, under, under his jurisdiction, basically. And then there was our, there was our organization. So... I told Ilambe, I already had a name for a formation if we could do it. And I already knew that he would like the name, and I certainly knew that Irving would like the name. And, of course, the name was Patrice Lumumba Coalition. I am the one who actually named it. And I was the first chairperson of the Patrice Lumumba Coalition. Um that lasted for about uh, uh, the first year, and uh, uh, after which I turned the reins over. Um, but that provides some of the background as to how it came to be. They did not know each other. They came to know each other 
because of yours truly. Mm -hmm. So to the listening audience, I'd like to uh, remind you, you're listening to Race Treaty. And tonight we are giving you some background, some pretty kind of buried historical background about this person, Yolande Braff, how it came to be that his name has been used to adorn now what is called a Lombie Braff Way Street co-naming resolution. The, re the resolution reads, to support the co-naming at the southwest corner of Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard between 124th and 125th Streets to Elambe Braff Way, whereas Elambe Braff Distinguished Citizen National Civil Rights, and of course, uh, it goes on to say, National Civil Rights and International Human Rights Leader who contributed substantially to Pan-Africanism, Black cultural awareness and Black empowerment, both at home and abroad in his life work. And whereas Elambi Brath of Harlem, New York, died on Monday, May 19, 2014, at the age of 77. And whereas Elambi and this is N-E-E, -E, Cecil um, Brathwaite, was born in Brooklyn, New York, on September the 30th, 1936, to Cecil T. Brathwaite and Margaret E. e. Telka Maloney Brathwaite. Both parents immigrated to the United States from Barbados, the Caribbean island geographically closest to the African continent. He was the oldest of three children, brother Kwame, formerly known as Ronald, Brathwaite, middle sibling, and brother John Edward Brathwaite, younger sibling. Brath was politically inspired early in his life by hearing his mother speak of her first cousin, Chanel Wickham, editor of the renowned Herald newspaper. And whereas Brath's political commitment evolved in 1956 simultaneously with the struggle to eliminate Negro as the nomenclature of African American people creating the Black is Beautiful campaign in 1961, following the creation of the African Jazz Arts Society and Studios, AJAZ, with his brother Kwame and a cadre of other local activists and launched the Grandassa Models and Naturally Shows. And whereas this esteemed man was a pioneer mm -hmm. in the Pan-African movement, he worked closely with the Federation of Pan-African Nationalist Organization, setting the stage for African Liberation Day and the development of African Liberation Support Committee, ALSC. His efforts played a critical role in educating and organizing thousands in the fight against imperialism, colonialism, and neocolonialism on the African continent. And whereas, despite his total immersion on the international front, as well as countless battles against racism at home, Elambi was employed at WABC TV, where as a graphic artist skills he acquired while in high school and at the School of Visual Arts and virtual consultant, particularly on African affairs to Gil Noble, the steam host of Like It Is. Elambi was instrumental in facilitating the presence of many of the African leaders on the show, said Robert Van Leer, yeah. an attorney and filmmaker formerly affiliated with the show. And whereas in 1975, following the footsteps of Black nationalist forefathers, Marcus Garvey and Carlos Cooks, Elambi yeah. Breath, it says here founder, but now we must correct this, co-founder uh, and later chairperson, not, not just the chairman in the first instance, but co-founder and later chairman to the Patrice Lumumba Coalition, PLC, a Harlem-based group which spread word of the ongoing struggle against oppression in Africa, coordinating hundreds of forums with the purpose of educating the masses and mobilize local support in the fight against apartheid and oppression of people all over the world. There are some more, uh, whereas, which I will continue, but at this time, I'm going to uh, take a station break so that uh, our station can identify itself and we'll be back uh, soon after that is done. Now I'm not going to be 
not a writer. Okay. <laughs> Black Talk Radio since 2008, providing new black media for the masses. Good evening. You're listening to Onaji Weed, host of Race Treaty, and we are here speaking to Elder Inwalimu Amani who is the co-founder of the Patrice Lumumba Coalition, Ahim, uh, Ilambe Braff, and, and Irving Davis, the former two who are ancestors now. And on the occasion of having a street named after Ilambe Braff, uh, Ilambe Braff Way, we're giving background uh, to, to his life, um, how he came in contact with uh, Irving Davis, how they formed uh, the Patrice Lumumba Coalition, and um, why it's so important for us to know about these three individuals, and certainly about the organization, the Patrice Lumumba Coalition, and um, how it has to be corrected in terms of the legacy, which has been um, misinterpreted uh, right. because information wasn't available. Uh, but we will make this information available and make the corrections, and that's one of the reasons why we are having this uh guest on the show tonight i was reading through uh, the document that uh, brought ilambe breathway into being and i left off and i'm going to read the last um paragraph and get to the bottom of this document whereas in 1975 following the footsteps of black nationalism forefathers marcus garvey and carlos cooks ilambe breath here it says founder and chairman but we will correct that seat to say co-founder and um, succeeding chairman at, because Brother Imani, I guess, in fact, was the first, as he is telling us so in this broadcast tonight. Uh, to the Patrice Lumumba Coalition, PLC, a Harlem-based group which spread word of the ongoing struggle against oppression in Africa, coordinating hundreds of forums with the purpose of educating the masses and mobilize local support in the fight against apartheid and oppression of people all over the world. And whereas Ilambe Brath was also one of the principal organizing, organizers when Harlem welcomed the late ancestor Nelson mm -hmm. Mandela in 1990 and was a strong advocate for the Central Park Five. And whereas an international figure, charitable, tire, tireless advocate for civil and human rights, imbued with the sense of, of justice this remarkable man's life continues to inspire others, leaving behind a legacy of fighting for freedom, long enduring the passage of time, remaining in the con confronting memory to all he served and befriended. Whereas Ilambi Brath is survived by his wife, Helena Numsa Brath, and their seven children, he passed quietly fitting on the 89th birthday of Malcolm X, El Haj Malik El Shabazz, I will add. Whereas Mr. Brath impacted legendary jazz entertainers, creating awareness and promoting jazz in the Bronx, is supported by Senator Perkins and U.S. Congressman Charles Rango. Therefore, be it resolved that Manhattan Community Board 10 wishes to remember Elami Brath by formally requesting that the New York, New York City Council and the mayor of New York City enact legislation to support the co-naming at the southwest corner of Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard between 124th and 125th Streets to Ilambe Brath Way with a vote of 28 in favor, one opposed, and zero abstentions. There is the resolution that brought forth Ilambe Breath Way, co-naming res resolution. So, uh, Brother uh, Elder Yamani, as you saw, I, I tried to, uh, on the spot, uh, make some corrections uh, to this document uh, that's been misinformed, and hopefully uh, you will be writing a letter uh, to, uh, to Manhattan Community Board 10. This is, um, this is a request on my part. 
and also to the city council and also to uh, the mayor so that their records can be corrected. The same way that you corrected me uh, in the beginning of this program, uh, I would like you to uh, do the same uh, for those who are connected with this venture. Well, I'll hear you. I hear you, but we'll have to talk about it. Okay. Um, uh, you, there are some specifics there that I don't have, and uh, you will have to supply that. It will be my pleasure to do so. Uh, so um, you gave us background in terms of um, how Ancestor Elambi Braff, in fact, met, was introduced to Ancestor uh, Irvin Davis, and how you three, in fact, co-founded the Patrice Lumumba Coalition. Uh, tell us about the Patrice Lumumba Coalition. What was its purpose? Uh, what did it achieve? Let the audience know something about this organization. The, the reason for its founding was to highlight to um, uh, our community what, in fact, was going on on the continent, where fighting, in fact, was uh, uh, continuing in Angola and Mozambique and in, in South Africa and Namibia, et cetera. Um, and among the things that we did, uh, we collected clothing uh, to send over uh, to, uh, to the fighting forces. We, we got uh, medical supplies uh, to uh, our brothers and sisters to, to uh, assist as with the wounded. Um, we also had fundraisers. Uh, I can tell you now that um, the uh, Beacon Theater on Broadway in New York, mm -hmm. we, uh, we had um, Nina Simone and Brother uh, Ron Carter and Brother uh, Gil Scott Heron. They all contributed their time and effort to raising funds so that we could help out in those areas. They will always be, uh, of course, Brother Carter is still with us, but Sister Simone and Gil Scott Iran, they've met with the ancestors, but they'll always be imprinted on my mind as givers, not takers. And uh, it's to say that these are just among the kinds of, uh, of things that the Patricia Lumber Coalition did. And of course, we were all over the country uh, we, we had offices as far west as California, and we were just spreading the message about what was going on because we had direct links. Um, Pan-African Skills Project had office, offices in uh, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and, of course, we were NGOs at the United Nations, so we had all kinds of contacts, and we used them. Uh, uh, with the PLC. Uh, organiz the organizations were very different. Of course, what we were doing with the Pan-African Skills Project was to recruit skilled African-Americans to work in uh, Tanzania and Zambia. And uh, the Patricia Mumba Coalition, of course, had a different mission. But because the, some of the entities, myself and uh, certainly uh, Irving Davis, were involved in both, so there was that crossover. And we worked day and night to make things happen. That was part of our culture. The coalition, um, when, well, as I say, I left New York in 1978, so three years after it's, uh, uh, the, the coalition's beginning. Um, and I, I did recruitment in the area where I live, but I also took on a different task for the movement, uh, which is why um, I, I was um, I came, you know, to this area. I took and I became basically a mentor to members of the movement. Uh, many of the kids or youngsters, I should say, of some of the uh, my civil rights colleagues uh, who had gone on to meet their ancestors, I had to mentor many of them. And that was my calling at the time. 
and still is, by the way. Uh, I'm sure you you know some of those uh, mentees, uh, Brother Onaji, um, Irving's son, for example. He is still being mentored by yours truly, at least one of them, one of the three boys. But um, the coalition, um, as of Ilambe's passing, was still functional. Today, I'm not so sure that it is. I was still being consulted uh, on PLC matters into the 90s. And after which I, I I was not active with the PLC, uh, except except by uh, consultation. So, uh, but anyway, I, I I enjoyed the time that I put in with PLC, and I certainly uh, am, am glad that I was in a position to help it in its formation, and largely because of what. We we founded the uh, coalition on. We achieved it. We got the we, we we wanted to be there when those nation states became free. They did. They did. They all did. Uh, some would say they have flag independence, but they some, some may still not have true independence. But nevertheless, their um, uh, a lot of the uh, nation states and the individuals who fought the wars were at one time colleagues of ours. Um, one of them is still um, very active in politics. For example, in uh, Namibia, their current president was a colleague, uh, Hagi Ganga, who had gone to Temple University, and then came back and went to Fordham University, which is where I graduated initially. And by the way, I also graduated from Pratt, your school. <laughs> uh, yes, I did information science there. So, uh, but uh, Hagi was a good friend, uh, and, and uh, Theo ben Rob, who was prime minister, uh, at, at one time, uh, we we and I could go down the line with the with the uh, some of the nation states as to who they sent to the UN to represent them. A lot of them didn't even at the beginning didn't even have NGO status. So we were uh, as uh, ex NIC people, we were introducing them to the UN. So uh, we have a long association with with some of those leaders. And especially uh, people like Hagi Gangab, who is the current president of Namibia. So it's to say we did a lot of work. I'm certainly proud of what we did. And uh, I think that we made an imprint where others were not able or in a similar position to do. We did. I'm not sure if I answered your question but no you did you uh, did and then you and you laid some other things out quite clearly um and what i'm gathering there was a symbiotic relationship between matrice lumumba coalition and the pan-african skills project uh, if yes, i'm hearing you correct if i'm hearing you correctly because of the true. work of the uh the pan-african skills project that Irvin davis was the executive director of he already had ties two liberation movements in Africa. You already had uh, relationships uh, in place. Absolutely. Uh, many of the liberation movements from SWAPO to um, um, uh, MPLA, um, Free Limo, uh, uh, all, both the uh, Zimbabwe organizations and, of course, both of the uh, South African organizations, there was uh, the Patriot, Patriot uh, Pan African uh, uh, ANC and uh, the uh, Pan African Congress PAC. I'm sorry, I'm getting mixed up here. They're, they all had offices in Dar es Salaam as well. And they, a lot of them, 
I won't say hung out at our office, but they knew about Pan African Skills Project office. So there was clearly a, a, a symbiotic relationship. And mm. and because of this foundation that Irvin Davis uh, created with you and others, which comes out of the fact, if it correct me if I'm wrong, because of the NGO status that SNCC had, that was the entree un into the whole uh, United Nations system, as I understand, because Irvin was the former NGO representative for SNCC. That is correct. Okay. That's correct. As, so because of, of that. Fact, mm -hmm. I would go on to say, and I'd have to be corrected, but I think SNCC was the only, quote, civil rights organization that had NGO status at the time. Do you, do you happen to know when, when they actually acquired that status? Uh, around 1960. Three, I believe, because Irving was the international director of SNCC at one point. Under James Foreman. Well, James, <laughs> James was, uh, he was, he was the executive director and uh, of SNCC, and he basically ran things. I, the work that I did for SNCC was directly under James. You have to understand how that, how, how I came to SNCC. I had, I had initially gone to a college in, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, at Fayetteville State, uh, now Fayetteville State University. Uh, at a certain point, a police chief threatened my life and told me that if he ever got me in his jail, uh, this is after taking me to the FBI office there at, at uh, the Pope Air Force Base. Uh, he told me, if I ever got in, in his jail, I may not come out alive. And the very next week, I got there was a petition um, with uh, the student leaders' names on it, and mine was on it. So I knew if I answered it, it was a petition to, to cease and desist all demonstrations in the city of Fayetteville. So I knew if I went down and answered it, if I jaywalked or spit on the street, I was in his jail. So I did not. I went back to New York. And one of the things that I I, I did was to uh, go to SNCC office and told uh, Jim Foreman how I could, I could uh, you know, um, help out. Told him about my organizing experience and so forth. So here I was working, I was a student, and I was an organizer. But I was single, I could do it, and I knew it. So so Jim would call me, or I would call him, and say, hey, I got a, I, I got a, a weekend, or I got a couple of days, where, where can I go to organize? So over the course of time, I organized in about 13 states uh, over a period of about seven, about seven years, seven, eight years, I guess. So that's how I did my work with SNCC. Initially, I had done some work with CORE uh, 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 while I was at the university, but I operated uh, after about a year with, with CORE, I operated under the aegis of uh, SNCC uh, by having a conversation with a sister named Ruby Doris, who died much, much too soon. Um, she's one of those sisters who's in the annals and should be. Um, she gave me my first organizing lesson. Uh, and it was totally by accident. I was at the university there in Fayetteville, and my I had a roommate, not a roommate, a teammate, because I played sport, who was from Tennessee, and Ruby Doris was a um, an organizer of SNCC in Tennessee at uh, Tennessee State, and his girlfriend was her roommate. So 
So when he called her this particular time, and <laughs> I had I had been asking him about uh, this Ruby Doris person because I'd read about her, and he says, "Well, Ruby Doris is right there. Why don't you talk to her?" So so <laughs> sure enough, Ruby Ruby gave me my first organizing lesson. That was listen to the people. Let the people lead you, don't lead them. And, of course, that's something I had to think about. Let the people lead you, don't lead them, let them lead you. And I've held on to that for a long time. What does she mean? She meant what ultimately uh, happened in SNCC was there were whites who were involved in SNCC. And some, they're well-meaning, but some of them, they only wanted to lead. Well, the thing is, you can lead if you let the people lead you. But you can't lead by leading the people. They have to tell you what the problems are. In telling you what the problems are, they are directing you as to what they want satisfied. Uh, and, and and some of the whites who were in SNCC did not understand that, which is why later on whites were exempted from leadership positions. But this young lady understood then, and it wasn't just for whites, it was for everybody. You let the people lead you. Let them tell you what the problems are, and you try to help them solve those problems. Are you with me? I'm listening, brother. I'm I'm, I'm just taking notes. <laughs> I'm listening, taking notes. <laughs> so 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 this is what I'm saying. That's how I became involved with with SNCC. Now I did not. I knew about Irving, and I knew well. I knew about a, a lot of people in SNCC. But I did not know him uh, really until about 1968. So, so how did you um, meet? You won't believe it, but we met in a church on Central Park West at um, a Unitarian church. I had uh, stopped in there uh, this particular Sunday because of something I saw on the um Billboard. And I said, I think I'm going to go in there and check this out. And it did not have his name on it, but it had something on it about a uh, civil rights speaker or something like that. I said, I'm going to stop in. And sure enough, it was Irving Davis who came and spoke. And <laughs> that's where we initially met uh, early in 68. I. Uh, <laughs> We, um, from that point on, we were tighter than tight. Absolutely. And, um, and, 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 and anybody will tell you that. Anybody who knew him and me will tell you that. Um, he, he didn't let me know that he was about to form Pan-African Skills Project at that time, but, uh, I, found out very, very soon after that it was in formation, and as soon as it, almost as soon as it opened, I was knocking on the door. Uh, bro- Brother Alice Douglas was my predecessor at, pa- at pan African Skills Project. Alice is uh, an eminent uh, attorney in Newark, New Jersey, uh, recently retired. Um, but he was my predecessor uh, at Pan African Seals Project, and I came in and was there for the duration. Yeah. So sometimes you you uh, uh, I made I mentioned the term giver and not taker. Mm-hmm. Uh, here I here I was at Pan African Seals Project. With the master's degree and operating on subsistence money, maybe maybe two hundred bucks a week, 
in New York City in the 70s. So, so I'm given. And uh, any anybody who uh, is interested, that's the kind of commitment that many of us made um, and because we wanted freedom. We wanted dignity. We wanted respect. And, hey, the price of freedom is not free. Mm. So I've learned that lesson. Lesson well you have learned and you have uh, contributed to teaching many others along mm. the way. Those who of you who are just listening in, you're listening to Race Treaty. I'm your host, Onaji Maweed, and we have on the airways tonight, esteemed elder Nwalimu Imani, who has shared with us uh, a brief history of not only Lambe Braff, ancestry Lambe Braff, uh, but also um, ancestor Irving Davis, how uh, Elder uh, Imwalimu joined, introduced them to each other, and from that joining was able to, in fact, create the Patrice Lumumba Coalition, uh, the eminent Pan-Africanist international organization uh, in based in Harlem and had offices and had different branches throughout the United States and had a very close relationship to the African liberation movements and and in Africa, uh, uh, Portuguese liberation fronts and uh, Guinea Bissau, and certainly bringing many of the African leaders, including Seko Torre, who I was there in Harlem, in fact, yeah. when they came to Harlem, uh, and many other presidents came to Harlem because of uh, this relationship between Ilambe Braff and um, Irvin Davis and uh, the person who you are hearing tonight, Elder Nwalimu Imani. Uh, we want to thank you for for your life. Um, I'm very sorry to tell you that uh, with this kind of information, the only thing I can do is invite invite you back. <laughs> so, so if you permit the junior to give the elder uh, another work, another assignment, if you would be so kind to indulge me. Uh, I would be honored again to have you back on these airways uh, to the listen audience. You can go back and, uh, and see the archives. Uh, it was April of uh, this year in 19, this is nine, listen to me, 19, 2017 in April, uh, where I invited uh, the guests to speak about uh, the Black, Black Manifesto, which also has connections to uh, Irving Davis and, and SNCC in, in terms of James Foreman. Uh, so we invite you to go back and to listen to that archive uh, show. Uh, certainly listen to this one again and tell your friends and your family, uh, foes and enemies alike to listen to it because it's truth. Because once you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So uh, Elder and Wally Moon, thank you so much uh, again for your life and, and for your time that you've taken with us tonight. Uh, I will be in touch with you to schedule hopefully another show where you can tell us more about your life and, and, and these different connections because the string in terms of your connection to CORE, your connection to the PLC, your connection to Pan African Skills Project, and I'm sure it's a probably another 10 or 12 other organizations <laughs> that you're also involved with that we don't have any knowledge of because you just have just lived your life. You, you know, you're a man of action, not a man of word. Uh, but our people need to know that history. It, it, it would just be unfair for us not to know uh, those kind of connections. So again, uh, Elder and Walimu, thank you so much on behalf of Race Treaty. Thank you so much and God bless and talk to you soon. Thank you for having me.